Alright guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you one of, if not the simplest method of creating a very simple uh, fade to black transition between two rooms in your game. So we have room 1 here and room 2. Um, they're just empty rooms with different colors so we can tell what room we're in at any given time. And we're just going to make an object that allows us to uh, fade the screen to black and then fade that black back in on the next room. So I'm going to go to objects, I'm going to create an object, it's going to be obj underscore fade. Now this object is going to be very straightforward really. In the create event, as usual, we're just going to establish a couple of simple variables. A is going to equal zero, A is going to be alpha, so that's going to be the amount of transparency of any... What I should explain. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a big black rectangle over the screen, and we're going to draw a varying transparency. Um, at the start it's going to draw it at zero transparency or zero alpha, so it's going to be setting this number to zero. That number is going to make its way to one, and then when it's one it means we're drawing a solid black rectangle over the screen, and that's when we transfer from one room to the next, and then we simply make that number go back down to zero. Uh, so A is going to equal zero to begin with, and fade is going to equal one. Fade is going to be the variable that's going to equal one while we're fading out, and it's going to equal minus one while we're fading back in on the next room. All this variable is for us to control whether or not we're fading in or fading out at any given time. So go ahead and save that. The other thing you want to do while you're in here is go ahead and tick this persistent box um, to make sure that this object carries over from one, one room to the next because it's going to be fading us out. It needs to also fade us back in on the next room. Um, and then the next add, uh, the only other event we need to add, sorry, is the draw event. So I'm going to stick the draw event in here. Uh, it's useful to remember the draw event also kind of works a little bit like the step event in that it happens every single frame of your game um, and is the, the event in which we do any kind of drawing actions or code. So in here, first of all, what we want to do is vary that A variable that we just set up in the create event. And we're going to vary it between 0 and 1 depending on how, how transparent the black rectangle is that we're trying to draw. So I'm going to set A to equal clamp. Now clamp is a special function that allows you to um, take a value and clamp it between two other values. Now we're going to be adding and subtracting from A but we want to make sure it doesn't go over 1 and it doesn't go under 0. So I'm going to take, first of all the value is going to be simply A plus fade multiplied by 0 0.05. So that there is us adding fade, which will either be 1 times 0 0.05 or minus 1 times 0 0.05. Um, and we're taking that and we're adding that to our alpha. So that's our alpha increasing because A is going to equal this value. But it's going to equal that value clamped between a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1. So that there is like the easiest way to create um, a, a variable that moves between two different values. Um, at the moment it only moves in one direction because fade is 1, so we're adding 1 times 0 0.05 to A every single time this line is um, this line is run, so we're just increasing A by 0 0.05 every frame at the moment. Then what we want to do is I'm going to say if A equals equals 1, which means that our alpha will be full and the rectangle that we're going to draw in a minute will be a full, um, like it'll be fully uh, opaque, you can see it, it's solid black color. Room, go to, next, which won't destroy this object because this object is persistent. And then I'm going to set fade to equal minus 1. Now the fact that I've set fade to equal minus 1 means that when it comes back round to running this line again, Instead of uh, adding 0 0.5 to A every single time, it's adding minus 1 times 0 0.05, so minus 0 0.05 every single frame. But again, keeping it between a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 1. Then all we need to do is check to see whether or not we're back to 0, A equals equals 0. But we have to remember that we start at 0, so we need to check that we're at 0 and uh, fade is minus 1, which means we're fading back in. Fade equals equals minus 1. Instance destroy and just kill off. It's fade object because we don't need it anymore. 
Okay, so now what our object does is it has this variable called a which starts at zero, it climbs slowly to one, and then when it hits one, we go to the next room and we set this variable to minus one, meaning that then every single frame, this variable is climbing its way back to zero, and then when it gets to zero, and the game knows it hasn't, it's not just at the start because it's going in the other direction now, we kill the object. Um, of course, that's not actually drawing a fade to our screen, so now we actually need to draw the rectangle based on where this, what, what number this variable currently is. So I'm going to say draw set color C black. Uh, draw set alpha to equal A, alpha being the transparency at any given time of our draw tool, and by setting it to A, we're setting it to whatever this variable currently is. And draw rectangle. Now I'm just going to space out um, the different parts of this bracket section over the next few lines to make it a bit easier to read. Um, and I'm just going to refer to the different coordinates of our camera or our view. I could just put like zero as like the x and zero as the y, and then the room size as like um, the width and room height as the uh, the height and so on. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to use the view because whatever our viewport is, that's that's exactly what we need to fade out, and that'll work in more games than just this one. So view x view to get our the x coordinate of our current camera, and then view underscore y view zero to get the y coordinate of our current camera. View x view zero to get the x coordinate of the camera plus view width view. W view, which will get the uh, the width of our current camera, which means you know we take like our x coordinate, we add the width of the camera, which gives us the right hand side of the camera. And then view y view zero plus view h view zero. So take the y coordinate of the camera again, but this time add the height of the camera to give us the bottom coordinate of the camera. And then whether or not the rectangle is an outline, which it isn't, so is zero. And that's the rectangle. The only other thing you would want to do here is, of course, set draw set alpha back to one in case you need that for drawing anything else in your room, which you probably do. Um, we don't technically need that here, but you might need it in your own game. Uh, so that's that, and that will draw that properly. Um, the only other thing I would do is go into depth here and set depth to be a large negative number. So. Now I'll set this to negative nine 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 nine, for example, and just make sure that that is higher. Uh, rather, make sure the depth is more negative than any objects in your room that you want the um, the fade to draw on top of. Otherwise, the fade will draw underneath them. So now, if I go into room one here and I just plunk object fade in the middle of the room and just run the game should see very simply, it fades to black and then fades in on the next room. Just like that, I'll run it again because it's kind of fast. And you can see that's working. So yeah, that's how you create a simple fade transition. The other thing you, how you would actually use this in the game, you could just, um, whenever you make a transition from one room to another, instead of calling room go to next, you can just do instance create obj underscore fade. Um, like I can do that, for example, in the creation code of this room, instance create uh, zero zero ob obj underscore fade, and that will create the fade object that will then take you through to the next room. As you do this, you probably also want to disable player control um, to make sure that they can't like do anything uh, while the room is fading out and stuff like that. That's kind of the main limitation of doing it in this very, very simple way, but it is by far the quickest way to just get a simple fade transition open running in your game. Hope that was useful to you guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.